Welcome. So what I want to do is show you how to write a polynomial function given R0. So in this case, what we're doing, and we're given three kind of zeros. We're given x equals negative 1, x equals 1, and x equals 3 is a 0. Or we could say as an x-intercept of our polynomial function. So to write it, what I like to do is you know, we've worked on some problems on given a polynomial function and then finding the zeros. And one of the methods we used for that was factoring. And so what I'm going to kind of do to write our polynomial is we're going to kind of call a reverse factoring technique. So what I'm going to do is if these each are zeros, I know that we could write them as x equals negative 2, x equals 1, and x equals 3. Right? When we solved the problem, we said, hey, here's the zeros. Our final answer would look like something like this, because we'd have to go ahead and solve for x. However, we're not trying to find the zeros. We already know the zeros. We're now trying to find the polynomial. So, ah. so what we're going to have to do is now when we write them as zeros, now what we're going to want to do is rewrite them as factors. So to rewrite them as factors, what I'll do is I'll add 2. And I'll set them back all equal to 0. So if I have I'll have x plus 2 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. Now, why would I set them all equal to 0? Well, remember how we got them to equal 0, but was by applying the 0 product property, right? When we have um, a times b equals 0, we say a equals 0 and b equals 0, and then we could solve. Well, we already have this point. Now we need to write them, since they're factors, we can write them as a product of each other all equal to 0. So I can say x plus 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3 equals 0. Now we're going to have a little fun, because now we have a binomial times a binomial times a binomial, binomial. And the best way I like to approach this is just do one at a time. Don't try to do everything crazy with this foil and moving stuff around. Let's just do one at a time. And the best way I like to do it is just applying the box method to keep everything as organized as possible. So I'll just take, put one up here, and then put the other binomial up top. Then I just multiply through. So x times x is x squared, negative x, 2x, negative 2. I can combine them to give me x squared plus x minus 2. So when multiplying my first two binomials, I get x squared uh, plus x minus 2. And then I'm going to multiply that by x minus 3 equals 0. All right. So now we have to do our multiplication technique again. And I'm going to erase this because I'm kind of running out of a little space here. So to do that again, again, I can just create another box. This one is going to be a little bit more of a rectangular shape because what I'm going to do is now I'm multiplying a trinomial times a binomial. So I'll put the binomial up top, and I'll put the trinomial on the side. All right, x times x is x cubed. x squared times negative 3 is so negative 3x squared. x times x is x squared. 3 times x is 3x. x times negative 2x is negative 2x. Negative 3 times negative 2 is a positive 6. Therefore, I combine these two terms. And I combine these two terms because they have the exact same variable factors. Therefore, my final function is going to be x cubed, negative 3x squared plus x squared is a negative 2x squared. 3x minus 2x is going to be positive x plus 6 equals 0. So we have our polynomial function equal to 0. But remember, we're not trying to write a polynomial that's equal to 0. We want to find actually the name of it. Well, we have our input as x. We can really name it any type, but we'll just call it f of x. So our final answer will be f of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus 6. Because remember, the only reason why we set it equal to 0 was to find the zeros. So we're just trying to find the polynomial. So there's your final answer. Thanks.